Protesters tried to disturb a meeting of suspended Romanian president Traian Pesescu in the capital Bucharest. Using megaphones, they called for him to step down until police arrive to stop the illegal demonstration and the crowd disperses. Days before the impeachment referendum against Bersescu, the power struggle between the centre-left government of Prime Minister Ponta and the centre-right president is fierce. While the government accuses Bersescu of having overstepped his presidential powers, he accuses the government of undermining democracy by attacking institutions such as the Constitutional Court and fostering a coup d'etat. Romanian think tanks warn that the rule of law is under threat. Sorin Ionitsa. There is still a majority of people in the parliament, in the political class, who do not want an independent judiciary. And the whole story about impeaching the president is looking beyond him. It's about appointing new people in the Procuratura uh, who are able to guarantee the, integrity, the, the impunity of the political class. So this is the whole war about. Do we want an independent judiciary? We said yes under European pressure. Now they are a little bit independent and they started to prosecute and to arrest people and put them in jail. This scared the political class. Now, of course, they are shocked and they make this coalition, they made the government collapse and they need to replace the president as long as the president doesn't want to play along. Among the people attending the Basescu meeting, we meet one of his closest allies. In Brussels, he represents Romania as a member of the European Parliament. In Bucharest, he is president of the centre-right PDL party. Christian Prida. I think that ultimately this political battle is delaying the entry of Romania into the Schengen area. We were expecting progress in the field of justice, but unfortunately we have problems in the field of constitutional justice. In the end, it's an exploitation of the tyranny of the majority against the rule of law. Romania entered the European Union in 2007 and now wishes to join the visa-free Schengen area, a step which could be postponed once again due to the ongoing political troubles. Another anti basescu rally set up by the ruling centre-left coalition, a legal one this time. The Ponte government came to power in May and tried to reduce the powers of the Constitutional Court, which is considered by government allies to be biased and manipulated by President Basescu. Let's hear from one of the deans at the National School of Administration and Political Science of Bucharest. Christian Pervulescu. The personalization of political life is represented by Mr. Basescu. He seeks to control politics with authority. That's why a reform of the constitution is the top priority for Romania. We now have five politicians in the constitutional court. This is a court consisting of nine members and five are former politicians, former ministers, former deputies. This court is highly politicized. A few days ahead of the impeachment referendum, the suspended president also fires up his supporters. The rally takes place in the scorching heat in Iasi, Romania's second largest city. Basescu became president in 2004 on an anti-corruption ticket. The former tanker captain was at this time very popular, but having backed an austerity deal with the International Monetary Fund, his popularity melted away. Back in Bucharest, we meet the founder of New Republic, a free market-orientated party launched recently in order to break away from corruption. The political crisis sent the Romanian Liu to record lows in a country already weathering a recession, and parts of Romania's business community are horrified by today's government actions. Mihail Niamtsu. The government is endorsing the position of people who are under accusation, legal, penal um, and moral accusations. The Romanian government is responsible uh, nowadays for the um, 
for the deepening or for the worsening of the economic crisis. The Prime Minister of Romania, Victor Viorel Ponta, is responsible for, uh, for academic um, for academic forgery, for plagiarism, but also he's um, hugely responsible for the uh, unacceptable crisis, political crisis, which he has provoked, backed up by corrupt people from the, uh, from the socialist uh, party. And I think the only solution to uh, our crisis is that Ponta would go. The political turmoil has raised doubts about the future of an international monetary fund-led multi-billion euro aid deal. We asked the Prime Minister if he's sticking to his agreements with the IMF and the EU. Victor Ponta. Yes, we will completely 100% stick on the agreements with the IMF and the European Commission. This is a fait accompli. <laughs> The former basescu backed centre-right-wing government fell over unpopular austerity measures. But today's centre-left-wing government also publicly pledges to stick to austerity measures in order to calm international markets. Thousands protested in mid-January against Basescu, blaming him for a controversial health care bill, as well as cuts in pensions and salaries. Maria and Stefan Serban participated in the January demonstration. As a teenager, Maria started working on construction sites and later in pharmacies. Her husband installed high-voltage lines. Now retired, they're struggling to get by. They have spent half their pension on medication. Maria and Stefan. Something must be done at least for poor people, for older people, because older people, they've done something for this country. Since April last year, they've not only reduced pensions, but also increased social contributions. Basescu has taken 20% of my retirement fund. When my husband got the pension letter and saw the reduction, I thought he'd break down. His face turned all red, he became very shaky. I was really afraid he'd get a heart attack. It's Basescu who is part of the crisis. He's raised prices. He's cut my pension. While most Romanians join the anti-Basescu mood, the European Union insists on fair play. The Ponte government should respect democratic rules and the constitutional court's decisions and should refrain from the emergency decrees, as the head of the European Commission representative in Romania explains. Nicolae Idu. The Commission decided to request a new report at the end of 2012, assessing to which extent the Romanian authorities addressed the problems of rule of law and democratic principles and uh, acted in the sense of restoring the essential checkings and balances between Romanian institutions. In September, European justice ministers will meet to discuss Romania's wish to join Schengen. While the technical preparations are done, the persisting problems regarding the rule of law in Bucharest could make several EU members veto the enlargement of the Schengen area.